Last time I tried to repair one of these, uh, it didn't go back together again, so I'm a little bit nervous. Um, in fairness, I was about eight years old at the time, so fingers crossed I can do a better job now. I don't know whether this works or not. The uh, power cable has been cut off, and uh, this has just uh, suffered a little bit of damage in transit as well. There's a whole section splashed off here and on this corner, and this corner uh, has unfortunately been smashed quite hard um, to the extent that this front uh, metal decal has uh, also damaged it's also got broken plastic and possibly some bent plastic down here so I'm gonna have to have a little bit of a think how to uh, tackle these it might just be that I clean them off and hope for the best okay I've got a mains cable attached it's plugged in I think you can hear I thought this volume turned up absolutely full. With it turned down, there's a little bit of a main sum. But hopefully the, uh, the hum here indicates that the amplifier is probably working. If I press play, nothing's happening at all. And the cap span roller in here isn't turning and it's pretty mucky in there as well um, yeah so uh, removing these four corner screws and then apparently we just turn it over there it is okay and apparently now this top is supposed to lift off go oh so I was just wondering what these uh, little sticky lines were inside and I've realised that of course they are the remnants of the old belts which are non-existent anymore. Yeah we can see uh, remnants of uh, melted belts in various places. There is some on this wheel here. You can see it dribbling down there. There's a bunch on the bottom plane here. So this is not going to be much fun. Um, it doesn't mean I can see a lot more of what's going on. The mechanism itself, apart from the belts, I think looks probably okay. Um, some of the things are a bit, how are you doing? This is an interesting technique. What we'll do is we'll just fasten that on there with an elastic band. I'm sure that isn't how it was originally done. Some bits of foam that we are going to need to replace around the edges. Okay, delving down a little further to the electronics. Lean that back and have it self-support. So there is a belt here, this is intact. I don't know if it's supposed to cross over like that. That I think is just the counter belt. Yeah, pretty sure that's the case. Transformer looks all right, voltage selectors down here uh, in the bottom. But let me take the camera off and uh, just quick tour. Okay, so here's a view of the electronics part of it. So over here on the right hand side we've got the transformer, loudspeaker in front of that, that's a 8 ohm I think. And then up on the chassis there we've got the, uh, up on the mechanism rather, we've got the drive motor. Um, which has this little fan on the top which just holds the speed more constant and things like that and keeps the speed from running away. We've got our moving coil meter up here for the recording level which is stuck on at the moment with just an elastic band it clearly used to have some foam and things like that on the bottom we've got some linkage down here oops just push that back some linkage here off the mechanism um, which connects I think the play record button down onto these switches on the main board down here on the left hand side we've got a volume control, tone control on the right hand side and we've got a manual automatic um, sort of actuator here also onto a switch which basically controls whether you've got manual recording level or auto recording level. The board itself is um, a resin impregnated paper board, very old fashioned. We've got the usual set of electrolytic capacitors all of which I think I'm going to replace. 
This one certainly actually looks like it's bulging a little bit at the end. So the seal on the end of it looks like it's actually pushing out. Um, but most of it looks okay. The other good bit of news is, despite the fact they're funny part numbers, these are readily replaceable transistors mainly. There are four germanium transistors on the output stage, which will be a bit more troublesome if I do need to replace those. So yeah, the first job with this, unfortunately, is to uh, try and clean up some of the uh, some of the grungy melted belts. Um, I'm doing a pretty good job of that. So far, I've just cleaned out the inside of the lid. This is why my fingers are black. Um, so, quick update on progress. First of all, I now have the messiest hands I've had in my life, I think. Um, I've dealt with this pulley here in the middle that's now clean there's a couple of stains on it that just won't come out and i've taken the what is this the take up reel off you can see here the totally melted um this this is the uh, motor and so you can see it has a groove here which is for the belt which i think is the bottom of the two grooves Fortunately, it comes out because this is on a slip pad. It doesn't slip very much at the moment. And I think the gunch has stayed off the slip pad, which is a big, big bonus. Okay, so we've got a bit of a problem here. Um, so this is off the uh, tape pickup wheel. You take that off. And then there's a the little uh, plastic section we saw inside that has the... Uh, pulley and then that connects through to this and as we can see this is supposed to have little um, rubber shaped pieces within it so uh, yeah I need to figure out what I'm going to do with that because these are liquid yeah so there we go yeah we just literally they're just gunge so I'm going to need to figure out what I'm going to do to replace those because I certainly do not have any replacements. So I've switched cleaning process and um, I was using um, paper kitchen towels um, with isopropyl alcohol to try and clean things. But this one was so bad that I decided the only way I could do it was with an alcohol bath. So this is about 90% isopropyl alcohol and um, it is absolutely black in there as you can see and you can see my hands but it is finally removing the gunge off this wheel there's still a little bit of work to do on the inside um, so isopropyl alcohol and a toothbrush so we're a couple of hours in and uh, most of the parts are uh, clean and dry now so we're ready to start assembly Apart from these, which need these little rubber, um, I'm going to call them clutches, because they fit on these pins and they allow the cylinder that this fits into to uh, kind of freewheel in one direction, but uh, be very resistive in the opposite. So I'm not going to show the making of that in this uh, video. I can't buy them, so I've had to uh, decide that I'm going to make some moulds and I'm actually going to mould these rubber pieces, uh, custom make them for this uh, repair. Um, I'll put a link in to the video down below. I'm sure we're going to be able to see it on here. So just on the bottom edge of this, this there's a tiny little bit of uh, leftover rubber that sort of leaked in between the two halves of the mould. But of course, it's just a case of getting a sharp scalpel and slicing it off. So yeah, these are excellent. Uh, really pleased with these. I think they're going to do the job very nicely. So there it is. Um, we are done. Our rubber parts are made. So it's not my belt position. Um, I'll just have to check that again. Yeah, according to this, it goes in the bottom position, which is where I have put it. Okay, let's just have a little look and see. 
Oh, there we go. Pickup wheel is turning as intended. Superb. Okay, just a bit of a quick clean on the uh, on the tape head. Okay, so uh, we've made excellent excellent progress with this. So I have managed to figure out how to weld this up. I had to take this assembly off in order to get the belt in, but that is done. And uh, yep, so the belt is in it drives the wheels turn so this leaves us with a few things to uh, think about now we've actually got the tapes turning and uh, going where they're meant to and we have some sound coming out of it where do we have to uh, go next um, now one of the things that we have to do is actually finish reassembling it properly because in fact for example, things like this roller are not installed properly. They haven't got their circlip on the other side, so they could come out. You see, they just lift up and down quite happily. Um, so there is all that to do. Um, there's a little bit more cleaning to do around here. I have cleaned the head. I have cleaned this roller. So cleaning aside, we need to uh, deal with this meter that's uh, dodgy. We're going to need to look at the electronics. Um, we are absolutely full of electrolytic capacitors uh, and they'll be causing some mains hum and uh, you know just from a, a sensible uh, approach we should think about replacing at least most of those. We also need to pay a lot of attention to the case. So of course the uh, corners are severely damaged and smashed and uh, this one was twisted so I can't just glue it back together um, and uh, in fact as well um, the decal that runs across the front um, is uh, twisted somewhat distorted and has some creases in it which will be hard to deal with the speaker as you see needs re-gluing so i'll have to take uh, quite a bit of attention to the cosmetics before i do that though i need to check that the tape speed is running uh, correctly because uh, otherwise it's all bets off so i'm going to set this to uh 20 seconds Set this to 20 seconds, and then I'll have it counting down. When it hits 10, I will uh, press the start button. Just to give me enough time. Uh, and then when it reaches zero, I will press the stop button, and hopefully, then I will be able to measure how much tape has run in 10 seconds. That's the plan, anyway. So there we go, we have our piece. Press our start, 18. 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. And there we go, right. And there we have it. Hopefully that shows We're right there. So 37.75, I make that, but I probably didn't get this quite back in. So pretty damn good. So yep, uh, 3.75 inches per second. And yeah, we've got a few largish capacitors around. So there's some electrolytics sitting in here and here. This one looks like it might have seen better days the ends look pushed out same with this one um overall they don't actually look too bad they're not bulging and uh these ones don't have an expansion point in the center so the ends have to bulge out if they're going to uh, just finding a pointery thing so this guy looks uh, very very dodgy this guy back here He's not looking too happy. Uh, this guy's fairly big. He's only, what is it, a thousand microfarad, 25 volts. So there's no huge voltages in here, happily. And this is 64 volts. That's the biggest one I've seen so far. 
16 volts yeah so these are uh, eminently replaceable resistor wise i'm happy with the resistors there's none of those um actually there might be a couple down here but generally speaking there are no nasty resistors that tend to go soft with old age which you sometimes see in stuff like this these are all uh, properly in case they're all absolutely fine um so yeah so we haven't got any worries there we might just clean this push switch that's in the center most of the other capacitors look like they are um not great but they're not going to be a, a problem for us a bit of a how do you doing resistor capacitor pair there i will check that resistor because sometimes these very cylindrical square ended resistors go a bit iffy over time um, and it's probably okay but uh, i don't want it to go any worse oh down here we've got some uh germanium transistors so i'm hoping there's no problems with those but yeah i think i would just replace these electrolytic capacitors um, on the board uh, that will uh, be good unfortunately the board's going to have to come out in order to do that because it's a single-sided board um, okay just a quick view of the back of the board there before i start uh, taking everything apart there's a strange uh, board in the bottom which literally has a chassis earth point on it just that this clips on so i've got one capacitor missing uh, and that's turned up from digikey today um, so looking at the board uh, all of the capacitors on the board have been replaced now um, save for that uh, that one so we'll get the board out and we'll get this last capacitor installed uh, i've bent the legs um, so it fits in neatly with this cluster of three capacitors So I did have uh, some axials that I could fit. Uh, the rest uh, I've replaced with radial capacitors. Now what I'm going to do is I will elastic across the bottom of these um, or put some you know, silicon rubber in the bottom so that they can't flap around uh, and come to any damage when this is moved about. Okay, ready to solder. Um, so these are quite large pads um, with quite big holes in so i have to apply a fair bit of solder in order to make sure that i actually flood the pad um, and uh, also get the solder to flow properly onto the leg so the method i normally use um, is to warm the pad get the solder flowing onto that move the move the tip of the iron a bit onto the leg and then start feeding into that junction until uh, everything is uh, appropriately filled and we've got a nice fillet so we'll just trim the trim the legs obviously and i'm going to clean the board down with some isopropyl alcohol just to take any flux off so okay here it is completed reassembled so uh, but yeah it all runs it works it amplifies um i've been able to run it with bigger reels without the top on um and uh, yeah noise comes out so um all of the uh, all of the capacitors have been replaced tape heads cleaned all the belts have been replaced um whatever repairs i could do to the case this was badly damaged in this corner and i haven't really been able to do that great a job but uh, it does at least have the proper tracks in there i manufactured a piece of aluminium to go in the handle where there would originally have been a piece um, yep tech counter works yep so as far as i can see everything uh, works certainly i think i'm done with this now so i shall pass this on to my brother and uh, he has a lot of tapes that were done on one of these when i was a child um, and uh, yeah he wants to be able to listen to them again so uh, this should do the trick i hope anyway i uh, hope you enjoyed that please give a thumbs up and subscribe and uh, leave any comments you want in the uh, in the comments below and i'll see you next time take care